I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and this week I'm going to work on my pin scour. I've been so busy this winter with the Land Rover stuff that I haven't got this vehicle out, and it has sat for so long that it won't run anymore. It might not be rocket science to get the pin scour running again, but I thought this vehicle is just different enough that maybe you'd want to see this. So let's get in and take a look. Before I hop in, I want to show you what we do when we go to start these vehicles. Down here we have two levers, one for starter and one is an idle lever. So you pull this one all the way out, that activates the choke, makes it easier to start. But after cranking it, the engine doesn't start right now. If we wanted to try to start it, we'd turn the ignition on and then press the start button. But we've got nothing. This vehicle has an air-cooled four-cylinder engine and it sits right here between the seats. There is an access panel right here that we can take off. We get a little glimpse of the engine right there, but not enough to really do anything. We can check the oil, we can add oil, and we can also access the distributor, but that's about it. We will need more access than this, so I have to take this entire panel that sits between the seats off, and that's what I'm going to do right now. To gain access to the cover, first I need to take the seats out, which is pretty easy. On this side, there's a thumb screw in the back. And on the passenger side, you just tilt them forward and they come right out. Now I want to remove this bolt on each side, which removes this clamp. And then there's a couple hand clamps up there. These are quarter turn bolts, so it doesn't take much to remove them. I'll we'll flip up the clamps and I can remove this. Now we have a good view of the Pook four cylinder air cooled engine along with the two Zenith carburetors. I suspect that we're not getting any fuel, so I want to disconnect the first banjo fitting and then crank the engine over and see if we get any fuel up here. I'm just going to leave it a little bit loose and now I'll crank the engine over. <laughs> As I suspected, we're not getting any fuel out of here. So either our fuel pump doesn't run or we need to prime the fuel pump. I suppose maybe we're even out of fuel, but the gauge says that we have half a tank. Maybe it's worth checking that first. Yep, we can see down into the fuel tank and there is plenty of fuel down there. The fuel pump is mechanical and located on the right side of the engine. You can see it down there. The hose on the top side is the outlet. I'm going to disconnect that hose and then hook up a vacuum to see if we can suck fuel up into the fuel pump. This yellow hose that I put on is connected to a vacuum. I'm going to turn it on, see if any fuel comes out. Not getting any fuel, so I'm going to try to crank the engine while the vacuum is on. We're still not getting anything, so our problem is before the pump. Coming back from the pump, fuel flows from the filter first over there to the pump. So I'm going to disconnect the hose that goes into the fuel filter See if we have any fuel here. I'm just going to use a short piece of pipe to adapt from this hose to my vacuum. Now let's see if we can suck fuel up from the tank. Yep, 
Yes, we're definitely getting fuel up here now. We were able to suck fuel up from the tank, so we either have a clogged fuel filter or these hoses had an air leak. If there's an air leak before the fuel pump, the fuel pump will be sucking air instead of fuel because it's a lot easier to suck in the air than to raise the fuel up here. A lot of times, if it is a vacuum leak, you can get by by cutting off the end of the hose and then using the fresh part of the hose. That's what I'm probably going to do. And I'm also going to go and grab a new fuel filter. Before I put the new filter on, I'm going to cut a little bit off of each end of these hoses. Now I can install the filter and remember filters are directional so look for the arrow on the filter so that you are installing it the correct way. The filter will not work properly if you install it backwards. Now let's crank the engine over and see if we get any fuel out of the fuel pump. <laughs> Still nothing, so we may need to prime the pump. I'm gonna hook the vacuum back up. This is kind of a bad design for the pump to get going because it has to suck fuel up here, which is higher than the pump before it gets down to the pump. The one advantage this does have is when you shut the vehicle off, all the fuel that's up here will rush down both to the pump and to the tank, keeping the pump primed. But for that to work properly, we first need to get the pump primed for the first time. So let's try pulling this hose off again, sucking fuel up into the filter, and maybe I'll put some fuel down this hose as well. Hook up the vacuum so we can fill the fuel filter with fuel. Fuel filter has fuel in it now. Let's connect this back up, tip it so that our fuel goes down to the pump. I'm going to hold it in a tilted position while I crank the engine over. <laughs> Maybe our fuel pump is bad after all. I'm curious about what's going on right here though. Kind of looks like the hose is made of two hoses right there. Hope it's not leaking. That bottom hose was really stuck on there. I don't think it's been off in a very long time. Okay, look at that. There's actually a joint here. So that was probably a pretty big air leak. I'm not sure why that exists. Looks like it adapts from one size hose to another, but our filter is the correct size. Maybe someone at some point had the incorrect filter size there and needed to adapt the hoses, but we don't need that. So let's get this out of here. We now have here a single hose with no chance of leaking in the middle of it. I'm going to hook up the vacuum again, see if we get fuel coming out of the pump. We're getting nothing, so it looks like the pump is coming out. I'm going to remove the two nuts that hold the fuel pump on with a 13 millimeter socket. Now I can take it in the other room and rebuild it. Well, let's take this apart. There is a couple creases over here and over here. This is uh, pretty hard as well. So this might be what our problem is.
Doesn't look like this is torn or anything. Let's check out the repair kit. So I'll just sort out these new parts. This part here feels much different than that one. So let's try to get that out. Yeah, that's pretty brittle now. There's our little filter. I guess that gasket has been squashed on there. These things are two, these things are just one piece now. Well, let's put it back together. Now I need to remember to clock this the same way it was before. Make sure the gasket isn't folded. I need to somehow get all of these layers to line up at the same time. I think I got it. Okay, let's put it back in, see if we have a different result. Well, let's try this again, crank it over, see if we get fuel out there. <laughs> going to hook up a gravity fed fuel source. Let's put some fuel in the pump. Okay, now it's pumping. Let's switch over to the other fuel again. Okay, there we go. I think we're getting fuel from the fuel tank now. I'll hook up my other hose. Now let's watch and see if we get any fuel here at this banjo fitting. There we go. Now I can tighten this up and we should be able to start the engine. There we go. Sometime in a future video, I should rebuild the carburetors. I have not done that since I've owned this vehicle. But in the meantime, I'd like to drive it. So for now, I'm going to put all of this back together. Everything is back together now. And it should start easily. Let's 
So it looks like it's fixed. That's going to be it for today. Look for more Pinsgauer videos in the future. And this goes to show you can never estimate how long it's going to take to do something on an old car. There's always something that happens. So if you want to see more things that make my life difficult, comment below and click subscribe.